Hi, in this video we're going to use MATLAB to get to the DFT of a signal. We, ha we will have two examples. The first signal we will generate and view the DFT components or the, the frequency spectrum of that signal and the other example is uh, to get the DFT of a signal that is recorded. I wrote down the steps here. Let's create a script and go through the steps. So to generate the signal, I need, first of all, to know how long it should be, the duration, what is the sampling frequencies, and what frequencies do I want to have. So let's say that I want to uh, use 10 Hertz and 20 Hertz for that I will need at least 40 Hertz to be the sampling frequency because that's twice the highest frequency to satisfy the Nyquist rate but let's say I'll take 100 for the time duration let's say 5 seconds and what else? Now this is fs, ts is 1 over fs. And for the time vector, it starts from 0, goes uh, with a step of ts, ends at td minus ts. Now my signal is going to be a sinusoid, so it will have the general form of 2 pi ft, you could also use sine if you want, x equals cosine 2 pi f1 t plus cosine 2 pi f2 now we generated the time domain signal. What's left is for us to get the DFT of that signal. Now the number of samples will be the time duration times Fs. The spectral component of the signal will be FFT. So FFT is the function we use to get the DFT of a signal. FFT of the small letter X. But here we want to get the absolute of the FFT. So just add the absolute command, which is ABS. And now what you have is the double-sided DFT. As you know, that DFT is symmetrical and so the components or the spectral coefficients are mirrored and you only need half of it to see what are the frequencies present. So let's take half of it. Let's call it something else, x2. x2 will be x, we're extracting components from x, and over 2. We are extract, extracting half of the double-sided DFT. And remember here, the power is uh, distributed over the whole spectrum. And now you're taking half of the spectrum, so just double that. Double the magnitude of the spectral coefficient, because you're taking half of it, which is the one-sided DFT. What else do we need? I think we have everything. We need the frequency vector, right? The frequency vector is what? So go over your theory. You will know that the frequency resolution is fs over n. So if I want to create a vector fs using my knowledge of the frequency resolution, I'll multiply it with k. And k is going to go from 0 to n minus 1. 
Now I'm taking half of the DFT, so I want also half of the frequency vector. And for that, I want to go from 0 to n over 2, just divide n by 2, minus 1 times fs over, over n. Let's see if we got it right. Plot f, which is the x-axis frequency, and then x2, which are the spectral components. And let's run the code. We expect two peaks, one at 10 hertz and one at 20, and that is what we got. Sometimes, or some books are scaling the spectral coefficients by n, some of them by square root of n. I usually do it uh, by dividing over by n. And it's good practice to add these lines before your code. Let's say clear, close all TLC. Have it as a section. So run the first section, command enter, and then command enter on the other section. And now we have this y axis scaled down. Now for the second part, which is getting the DFT of a signal that is recorded, um, I downloaded signal from uh, PhysioNet. This is the information about the signal. I took 10 seconds. And the file I downloaded has actually six signals, but we want only one, all right? So I'm just gonna take the first row and view what are the frequency components in that uh, signal. So I'm just gonna drag, just drag this file and drop it. Here, I know that fs is 1000, uh, because I chose 10 seconds, I know that this is uh, 10 seconds of it. And what else do I know? I know from the vector here what is the number of samples. So let's create another section. Let's call x is equal to val, which is the name of the parameter here, which holds six signals. We want the first row, all of the columns, and then assume I didn't have fs, how would I get fs? I know n, which is the length, length of x, and I know td in this case was 10 seconds, and so fs is equal to Remember here, n is equal to TDO uh, times fs. So fs is n over td, n over the time duration. What else do we need? I think we've got everything. So we can copy and paste to reuse our code. So here we're getting the DFT, we're taking, extracting half of it, and we have the frequency vector. Now we can plot and see. So this is the DFT of that signal. Let's zoom in. We can see that most of, or all of the frequencies are here. So zoom in. Um, and more. This is the, DF, uh, the DC component and these are the frequencies present. I hope that this video helped you to understand how to get the DFT of any signal using MATLAB. If you have any questions please feel free to ask.